Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, coming to you with a new episode this week. And this week, we are going to talk about shoes, actually. Uh, You may be thinking, shoes, what does that have to do with the warehouse? But uh, we wear shoes in the warehouse and in these types of distribution and logistics environments. Um, And oftentimes, we have to wear protective shoes. And we should wear protective shoes because we're around uh, heavy machinery, sometimes heavy product, um, and also all different types of equipment and moving parts and things of that nature. Uh, So we should be protecting ourselves for uh, safety's sake. Um, But this is an interesting story. We're going to talk to Emily Soloby, and she is actually the founder of Juno Jones Shoes. And I stumbled across Juno Jones Shoes, uh, I want to say sometime last year, maybe even close to like a year ago when I was starting the podcast a little bit. Um, I was looking for interesting guests, and I saw that she uh, started this uh, female-focused steel-toe shoe company. Uh, and safety shoes. So I thought it was pretty interesting um, because I actually had been dealing with a similar experience where uh, I was a manager and um, part of my team, a lot, there were a lot of females on my team and we had a company requirement that we need to wear steel toe shoes. And a lot of the complaints were like, Oh, none of them look uh, cute or anything like that. So, (laughs) so I think Emily is kind of tackling that issue. So we're going to talk to her today about her story and about uh, Juno Jones shoes. So Emily, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, thank you for having me. Definitely. Happy to have you on. So so why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about yourself and kind of your background? Um, wait, so you, you're in Bordentown, New Jersey? Yes. I'm a Jersey girl. Okay. I, right. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> no, I didn't know so that. I'm, I knew you are yeah, in Philly I'm, now, yeah. Yeah, I've been in Philly for a while. But yeah, I grew up in New Jersey. Okay. Um, and I graduated from the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. Um, And yeah, and I I went there because I discovered that I loved women's studies and they had a great women's studies department there. Um, Yeah, and then while I was there, I started volunteering uh, as a domestic violence courtroom advocate, um, which means that I, I would help women with paperwork, for restraining orders for protection, and then um, I would advocate for them in court. So doing, yeah, so like doing that made me realize that I wanted to go to law school. Um, so I, I took the LSAT and I moved back home to the Philadelphia area where I went to Temple University School of Law. Okay. Um, and then during my time in law school, I continued to study women's issues, and uh, I I did this amazing internship at the National Organization for Women in Washington, Mm D.C., and then why would you things like uh, draft model legislation, lobby Congress, um, and do outreach um, and community education and stuff like that. Okay. Um, So, but when I graduated from law school, I took a job at uh, Legal Aid, which are you familiar with that? What is it now? Legal Aid? Legal, Legal Aid. Yeah, like legal services. No, I don't think so, no. It's so legal services is like um, pro bono law that's paid for by grants and by the state. So oh, okay. I was representing, okay. yeah, so I was representing mostly women in um, divorce, child custody, um, and abuse cases. Mm-hmm. And uh, so most of the people that I was seeing like were, couldn't afford to pay for a lawyer, so usually they were there were women because mm-hmm. um, maybe, they, maybe they had been like stay-at-home moms and didn't have resources to go anywhere else. 
So I did that for a few years. Um, and then I just, I needed a change from it. So I went back to graduate school at Temple mm-hmm. to get my, to get my master's degree. And that's where I met uh, my future husband, Ryan. Okay. And that's where the story kind of shifts because, uh, you know, I have a background in transportation. So we just, right. uh, this is where that sort of started. Okay. So yeah, I, I met Ryan. Like, wow, how did, yeah. how did you get to this other part? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like there's so much to the story, but, um, yeah. So I met Ryan and we decided uh, to buy AAA school of trucking from his uncle who was retiring and we didn't really? have experience in that industry at all, but we were just both looking for a change. Okay. Well, so think, what, what was it? What was uh, his background? My husband, Ryan. Yeah. Um, he was doing audio actually. Really? Okay. So yeah. Um, audio and he was teaching. We, we met in like a media graduate program. So he was teaching at NYU and he was actually teaching like video gaming. It was, we were both on a totally different path. Yeah. Um, but we're entrepreneurial. So okay. uh, I think we just saw this as a fun opportunity that we could do together and we could, um, we could have flexibility and we could, you know, grow this company. So we took it on as a challenge and we learned the industry um, and we, we grew it. So it was a small, when we bought it, it was a small driving school okay. with a couple of trucks. Um, and it was in Harrisburg. And then so we opened a campus uh, in Philadelphia, and we focused on growing the company through uh, government and private contracts. So, okay. And now it's, been, now it's been 10 years. And we've grown it uh, into, you know, a successful, like, transportation safety training and consulting firm. Oh, wow. So we send, our, we send our instructors nationwide. Okay. Interesting. So, and you're still doing that now, too, as well? We still own the business, yeah. Oh wow, mm-hmm. okay, interesting. So now, so you were doing all this this legal work and legal aid help, and then you moved into this kind of totally different thing, and you're mm-hmm. doing transportation training and driving school and yeah, um, CDL heavy equipment. Yeah. So so now, how did the idea, I guess, of Juno Jones come up and, and t- obviously tell us, you know, how the idea came up and tell us, you know, what exactly is Juno Jones? Okay. Um, well, so Juno Jones is our startup creating stylish safety footwear. So you mentioned like there were complaints mm-hmm. that people thought they weren't cute enough and that's, that's like a huge part of it. Um, okay. it's, so when you talk about like something being cute, um, you know, I can see how some people might off at that or not take that seriously but yeah. uh what really what it means is that women want to feel that they're being addressed right. and they're that people are making gear for them so i don't know I, our mission is to create steel toe boots for women that um that look good but also that fit you know that fit well that fit their feet mm-hmm. um and then so our mission is to do that but also in doing that to empower and normalize um, the idea of women being in that traditional field. So that's Juno Jones. And we, we have a whole collection, but our first style is called the Medi Boot. Right. And that is the one that is live on Kickstarter right now. It's our first release. Okay. All right. Um, and we, we, uh, we got that style through really crowdsourcing, um, mm-hmm. you know, talking to hundreds of women in hazardous fields to really refine the exact style. Um, but it's a classic, style leather jog for ankle boot yes. and the, the leather is i don't know if you've seen pictures of it but the leather I've is seen pictures yeah I, actually I, i've seen pictures and asked asked a couple oh. uh women that i know that would wear uh, uh-huh. or would have to wear safety shoes and they were like oh uh-huh. wow that's that's nice like that actually looks good um yeah i mean we wanted to do something that appealed to a lot of people and we really took a lot of feedback into consideration and we mm-hmm. went through so many prototypes um for both Appearance and fit. Okay. So now, but, how um, did um, I want I want to take it back a minute. So how did mm-hmm. so obviously there was a need in the market, right? And mm-hmm. you know, like I said, from my personal experience, you know, and and maybe I guess maybe cute was not the right word, but you know, they're okay. saying like you know everything looks bulky and mm-hmm. it's like this thing, and even um, I guess w- what happened was because this was a position that I had come in. Um, and then I was tasked to build a team. So, uh, hmm. we all kind of were starting around the same time and, it, and wearing safety shoes for me, um, coming from my previous job, uh, I was not a requirement. So to this job it was, mm-hmm. so I also had to find something. So I found like a nice boot, um, from Danner boots actually. And, mm-hmm. uh, when I 
came in with those, they were like, oh, I wish they actually said, oh, I wish there was something like that for me. And they had, I mm. think, bought these ones. Um, they were like pretty bulky looking mm-hmm. sneaker kind of things, but they were all like, oh, you know, I don't like them and I don't want to wear them. But we were like, well, you have to wear them because, you know, it's the company yeah. policy and it's for safety. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, I definitely see I mean, firsthand what you're saying. So, yeah. so how did you, I guess, initially recognize that there was that need? Was it because you wanted something working with the, the trucks and everything? We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, well, when we first uh, you know, started out with the company, we knew we wanted to grow the company. We wanted to diversify. So mm-hmm. um, right away we started just heavily networking and I was always at I was we were flying around the country I was going to Washington DC and I was going to client um, meetings and uh, you know facilities and I was going from office and I was okay. from the office to the job site and I mm-hmm. I started looking because I wanted to feel put together I was representing my company and I was trying to get big deals right and I, I wanted to feel put together and I just couldn't seem to accomplish it with the right shoes I have mm-hmm. this picture of myself in Utah standing um with a client <laughs> and i was wearing four inch heels and it's like <laughs> it, it wasn't you know it was it, it looked good but it wasn't really what i should be wearing it's on right. site and then i had other times where i would be where i would be wearing the safety boots but i would feel like i was losing credibility because i just looked silly mm. so i i you know, so it, was, it was really for me and i couldn't shoes have some been something i've always been interested in as a hobby mm-hmm. um and just you know, I did I took some shoemaking courses over the years, and oh, interesting. so when I saw that that market gap, it was really something that bothered me. Um, and then I began talking to women, you know, not just in the transportation industry with me, but just in many other industries. And that's mm. how I realized it was, you know, it wasn't just me; it was a big problem that was pretty pervasive. So, and people were so excited about the idea that I was telling them that I just knew like I had to, I had to go with it and I had to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think when I saw, I mean, I'm not a woman actually, I don't know if you guys can tell by the voice, but, (laughs) um, (laughs) um, but yeah, I mean, when I came across the Instagram for Juno Jones, it was like, it was probably just a couple months after this ex- uh, experience that I was talking, or I guess it was probably mm-hmm. maybe like a year after. And I, and when I saw it, I was like, Oh man, like that's, you know, I'm so happy that someone has thought about that because that's exactly like what my employees were, had been talking about that they were I looking love that. I, yeah. I love that you're a man and you took interest in it. And, you know, because like at first, when I first started the Instagram, I was just uh, connecting with women mm. Um, and then I would get the occasional man and I'd be like, Oh, maybe they just followed us by accident. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but then I realized like, no, actually they're, yeah, they're interested in it yeah. for their colleagues. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cause I think that, cause part of the issue, right. Was that, uh, these employees were coming in and the majority of them, they hadn't worked, they've had worked in a warehouse environment, but not at a company that was requiring safety shoes to be worn. Mm-hmm. So okay it was like uh you know it's a struggle at first because it's it's something different um Mm -hmm. and obviously you know a lot of safety shoes are not necessarily comfortable and you got a steel toe they're heavier um it's a change to walk with them so Mm -hmm. so there was like some resistance and it was tough and then the fact that they couldn't find something that was actually you know like stylish or they felt i guess comfortable and you know confident in too as well was it difficulty yeah so so it became kind of like this uh, let me see if i can find something maybe for them so Uh you know i would find websites and be oh there's more variety here um and then you know one one lady would find one that was like 
nicer looking than all of a sudden like she would share it and you'd see like uh-huh. they all come in with these new ones like the oh, next funny. week or something so yeah. <laughs> so yeah so i mean it was you know totally first-hand experience with it and um so when i came across it like i said i mean i was just like oh wow you know this is yeah. this is like perfect this is great so so i'm really happy you're doing it so so now you mentioned okay. the kickstarter mm-hmm. and the kickstarter actually when so i think so we had connected like last year sometime so yeah. i remember at first yeah. i was like oh do you want to come on and talk about it and you're like well we're still in development we're not ready and and yeah. now obviously you guys are ready and your the kickstarter was fully funded in like mm-hmm. 24 hours right so yeah. i mean were you expecting that to be the case or was that totally like a shock what what were you expecting so- as you're going to launch here Okay, well, it wasn't a shock. We knew mm-hmm. that the need was there, right. and we and we knew that people wanted the boot. Um, but what we weren't sure of was whether Kickstarter would be the right platform for that. Mm-hmm. Um, because a lot of people told us that Kickstarter is mostly a male platform. It's 80% male, and it's going to be really hard to reach the women. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were told that most of our customers wouldn't understand Kickstarter, or they wouldn't want to take that step of registering. Um, and I'm sure that there are plenty of people like that, but, uh, we, and we know, knew it wouldn't totally convert, but Mm. we do, we knew that our community is very passionate about the product because they've been waiting and waiting for this at the launch. Mm -hmm. Um, and we know they're technologically savvy people. So, uh, we decided to take a chance and use Kickstarter, uh, as our launch. And another reason we chose it is that. We thought it would be just a fun way to rally everyone together at once. I mean, and like generate some excitement and then get people to spread the word that way. And I think that's really what happened. Um, I think like as soon as we, you know, hit the launch button, mm-hmm. we had we had a very big bump of pledges. Like all the people that were waiting just went in, and that kind of um, helped us on Kickstarter because it when I think when you get a lot of pledges at the beginning, yeah. they they might choose you as a, a staff pick or project we love. And that's what happened. Mm-hmm. That gave us some extra visibility on their website. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think we weren't, we weren't surprised that people love the booth, but we weren't sure what to expect with Kickstarter as our platform, but it actually worked out really well. Yeah. Yeah. I remember actually I saw, I think we were emailing the same day when it went live or the day before or something. And, um, I was looking at it and as I was like looking at it and reading the little write up, uh, like, it was just going up like the number and I was like, wow, like this is really, really a hit, like really taking off. So, so you guys kind of really built your, uh, your tribe there while you were developing in the last year. So, yeah, well, it took us a year. Um, you know, it took us a little longer than we thought it was going to take, but it was, it was good because it, it brought everyone together and created a community. Good, good. That's great. So now what about, so where's the name come from? Juno Jones. So when I was, I spent a very long time on the name and I don't know if you've tried to name anything recently, but it's very hard to find things that are, you can trademark. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I really wanted to choose a name that was easy to remember, easy to say, and represented, um, represented what could be like the strong, modern, adventurous woman. Okay. Um, And so, and I love Jones because uh, of Indiana Jones. Like, I don't know if you know the character, Jessica Jones. Oh yeah. Okay. So I sort of, yeah. So Juno Jones is sort of like a fictional character to me that represents like strong women. Interesting. Interesting. So, yeah. so will you be developing kind of like a, like a, maybe like a super woman <laughs> character for the brand? <laughs> no, or? not really a super woman character. I mean, I think, I think she's like, she is the everyday woman, but she's a strong okay. woman, you know? Um, but yeah, we do have a Facebook group, which I don't know if you know about called Hazard Girls. I didn't know about that. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a Facebook group um, for, for all women in non-traditional fields. Um, it started uh, out mostly from the in- Instagram page um, mm-hmm. that I, that you found us on and people were messaging me and saying like, Hey, do you know any other, um, you know, engineers or do you know anybody in this field that you can introduce me to? Mm-hmm. So I was like, why don't I just, you know, bring everyone together in, in a group and I, I started hazard girls on Facebook and I think that resonated people like the name. Um, and, and that, that grew really quickly also. So, uh, we were in like the hazard girls are in there every day chatting and talking about the issues and reposting articles. And really, 
Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really, I think that's awesome because, you know, obviously, you know, the podcast is focused on logistics, distribution, transportation industries. Um, yeah. But, you know, I see and I work in distribution as well and logistics. So um, it's, mm -hmm. you know, I see all the time, especially as, you know, the need for more people working in distribution centers and all those types of mm -hmm. things, um, you know, the operations that I've worked in, we've always like had a high number of female um, employees, mm -hmm. you know, they're out there um, just like the guys driving forklifts and picking orders mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, and I've been in situations where people have kind of like frowned upon that a little bit. And I'm like, why, you know, what's, what's the point? Like I have, you know, women out here that are picking more orders than the guys that are out there. I mean, actually they're working oh. better. So I'm like, you Oh know. yeah. People will tell you that women are better because they have more to prove. Right? <laughs> they, they, have, they have to try harder to prove more. Yeah. So, um. so I think it's really great that you're um, embracing that as well and kind of, you know, uh, creating that community. I mean, that's, that's awesome. I'm definitely going to check that out. I'm not, oh I'm yeah. Check it out. And because I'm not a woman, uh, but well, you do have to identify as a woman and you already, uh, outed yourself as not identifying as a woman. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I made a mistake. Well, I can edit this. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a really great thing because, you know, I think that it's, you know, there's no difference. So, so why should, uh, anybody frown upon it or think differently? I mean, I see you first yeah. and like, i I think it's no problem. Um, so yeah. So now what's, what's next for Juno Jones? So you guys are launching your first, the, the Medi boot right mm -hmm. now. And you said that there's a whole line. So, so yeah. what's, what's next after this? Is there another launch or the whole line is going to come out? How is that going to work? Well, um, as far as the boots themselves, um, I mean, we're going to be getting the boots made um, and we're really going to be focusing on that. We're having everything shipped. Um, from the manufacturer to very close to where we are in Philly, so that mm -hmm. we're going to inspect every pair okay. um, and make sure we see them before they go out. And then they're going to we're going to have those delivered. And yeah, we have a new style coming out. I don't want to reveal it yet, Ooh, okay. but um, we have a second style that will be released. Um, and also, I mean, we're focusing a lot on the brand. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned Hazard Girls, and we just signed on. Uh, do you know the Wham podcast? It's called the Women and Manufacturing Podcast. Mm -hmm. I don't, but I'm definitely going to check it out. Oh, check it out. It's great. Um, but we just signed on to do a monthly show mm -hmm. with them in interviewing oh. different Hazard girls. Yeah. And I'm, I'm actually going to be the host. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Like, so from like never having done a podcast to uh, suddenly <laughs> to host, yeah. hosting one. But um, wow, but that should be fun. That's how yeah. I did this. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah. I never did a podcast before and then I just did this. So uh, Yeah. Things happen, things happen best. But yeah. Um, <laughs> We we also just debuted in Philly Fashion Week, which was very exciting. I saw that, yeah. Um, and we were selected uh, recently as one of six companies to be part of the Philadelphia Fashion Incubator at Macy's. Interesting, okay. Um, for 2020. So that's a big honor, and that means we're going to be participating in a lot of events with them throughout the year cool. um, and ha have access to... Uh, you know, a lot of advisors and mentors and people in the industry. So that should be very helpful for us. Definitely. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's really cool. So, so now how can people, I guess, stay up to date on Juno Jones and how can they, I guess right now the Kickstarter is closed so they can't, they can't order. No, it's, it's, we have one more week. We have oh, one, one more week. week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know when, uh, what your schedule is, but, um, yeah, we so are when's, up the, when's the last day. Okay, it is March 12th um, at midnight on Eastern. Okay. All right. So, so let's say like 11, 11.59 p.m. on March 12th. Okay. Us, so you don't get it mixed up. And, um, the last minute so order, yes. 11.50. Yeah. yeah. So right. get in there. <laughs> get in there if you yeah. want them at this discount because they're, they're going to be, that's uh, probably the biggest discount they'll be at right now while they're on Kickstarter because, um, there's a little bit of a wait with manufacturing and Kickstarter. So we reward our, first, you know, early, early adopters there. But, um, so yeah, that, uh, that's March 12th. And another way to get in touch with us is just to go to our website, which is junojonesshoes.com. Um, and you know, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook and all the social media. It's the same um, address, just at Juno Jones shoes. Okay. And, and of course, 
uh, if you are a woman and you're in, you're working in or interested in non-traditional fields and want to be inspired, um, join Hazard Girls. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, and we'll definitely post all those links on the newwarehouse.com as okay. well for cool. reference. Um, so, so now after the Kickstarter, though, will the boots be readily available to order? Yeah. So after the, not right after the Kickstarter, but as soon as so the yeah, manufacturing yeah. order is ready um, and we're shipping, then you people will be able to order them from our Shopify site, Got our, it. our website. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very cool. Um, yeah. So, Emily, thank you so much for coming on the New Warehouse podcast. <laughs> and like I said before, thank we'll you. definitely put all this information on the newwarehouse.com for listeners' okay. reference. And uh, we hope uh, that you have great success and uh, we're ready thank to see, so that, see that next shoe. You've been listening to the New Warehouse podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from The New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.